This video continues our discussion of basic graphing calculator techniques that can be used for graphing linear functions. Have your graphing calculator handy so you can do the steps with me. Let's graph y equals negative 8x minus 200 for x values from negative 10 to 10. Remember to first analyze the function's equation for important information. We know this is a linear function because it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. The graph is a line with a slope of negative 8 and a y-intercept of negative 200. The line will fall from left to right because of the negative slope. And the y values will become very negative for x values close to 0. So using this zoom 6 standard window will not be helpful. Let's try it anyway and see what we get. So we're going to press y equals and enter our equation. So we have negative 8x. Remember, use the negative key, not the subtraction key. So we have negative 8x minus 200. And we press zoom 6. Now you notice we don't see anything. That's because the y values, when x goes from negative 10 to 10, or out of the negative 10 to 10 range of the standard window. So we're going to have to increase our y max and increase our y min to get a better look at what's going on with this graph. So let's use the table feature of our calculator to find a good range, just as we did in the graphing part one video. So the first step is going to be to make sure our equation is actually in the y equals area. So I press y equals. There's my equation. Remember, a table cannot be generated if there's no data in here. Next, I press second and right above Windows Table Set. And I'm not going to start at 31. I'm going to start at negative uh, 10. So if I press clear and negative 10, so we're going to start at negative 10, and our input's going to increase by 1. So I press second again and graph, which gives me the table. Now, if I press the up arrow a couple of times, you can see uh, at negative 10, my y is negative 120. So when my input's negative 10, my output's negative 120. And if I arrow down a few to get to positive 10, when my input's 10, my output's negative 280. So my y min and max, uh, let's see, negative 280 would be my y min. But just to be safe, let's, let's call it negative 300. And I'll arrow up a few back to negative 10. And we'll call this our y max is negative 120. Again, I'm going to use negative 100. Uh, you can use negative 115, negative 105. Uh, it's not an exact science. Remember, the goal is just to make sure that uh, between negative 10 and 10, uh, when we uh, go along the x-axis, that we capture the entire graph uh, within negative 10 and positive 10 on the x-axis. So we press the window key, and our y min is negative 300. Right? We found that from the table. And our y max was negative 100. Now our scale, we're not going to count by a hundred um, uh, by ones, because uh, to go from negative 100 to negative 300 by one, that would be an awful lot of tick marks. So let's count by 50. So I'm going to change that to 50. So each tick mark will represent 50. So our window looks pretty good here. Uh, we're going from negative 10 to 10, counting by ones negative 300 to negative 100, counted by 50s. So back to our steps, we've pressed y equals to make sure uh, our equation was entered. We went to the table set window and set our table. And we set the window using the values from our table. So now all that's left to do is press graph. OK. Now we see the graph from the left edge to the right edge, right? The left edge of our screen to the right edge of the screen. This is definitely a better window than what we initially had, where we didn't see anything. 
and this is going from x is negative 10 to x is positive 10. So you might wonder, where is the x-axis? I mean, I see these dots denoting the scale. We're counting by ones, but we don't actually see the x-axis. Well, the x-axis is somewhere way up here, because our graph is well below the x-axis. If we want to include the x-axis on the screen, we need to make our y maximum some positive number. Since our y scale was 50, we could make our y maximum positive 50, one tick mark above zero. So let's change that. Let's try that and see how that changes the graph. So I press window. So you see here how my y max stops at negative 100. So if I want to see my x-axis, I have to go above zero for my y max. So we're going to change this to 50, which would be one tick mark above uh, zero. And we press graph. Aha. We still get the entire graph from the left edge to the right edge of the window. And now we have our x-axis. And you can see we're counting by ones here. Uh, along the y-axis, we're counting by 50, right? 0 to 50, negative 50, negative 100, and so on. So note, the two graphs we obtained are really the same graph, just shown in different windows. There are many correct windows. So once again, we see how using the table to obtain a y minimum and a y maximum value for the graph uh, or the graphing window for linear functions is quite helpful. We can use the table feature no matter what value of x we choose. And this is much better than the guess and check method that we uh, were about to attempt in uh, the previous video. So that completes the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.